What is up guys, this is Tiro back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Surface ROM review and this is the 30th November 2023 build and I have also showed you guys how to flash this particular ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro or any Android 14 ROM you can actually flash with that method. So the whole installation guide will be present in the description so don't worry. Talking about the Android version section, this is how it looks like. By the way, I'm trying this dark theme because I show every time in the white theme. I'm gonna be shooting this video today in dark theme. And let me know in the comments if you guys want dark theme in the future videos of any custom ROM. And here on top, we get the Dirtface logo. Looks beautiful up close. And we have the Android version or the platform version as Android 14. And if you just keep tapping on it, you will get the Android 14's logo, of course. And if you just tap and hold on this particular area, you will feel a haptic feedback and it will give you that Android 14's game. And it's constantly vibrating. So yeah, as you can see, this is a game of Android 14. You can play it from here. We have the dirt-faced version as 14 official. This is a alpha build, you can say. And here we have the maintainer's name, Orgomondo. So huge thanks to the developer of this ROM. And the security patch here, we get November 1st, 2023. Stock kernel as the 4.14 Waffles kernel. And the Linux test shows as enforcing. In the system panel, this is how it looks like. Now, it is a really good thing that we get the USB configuration right here. So it's just very convenient for me because I just select that to file transfer every time from developer options yes as of right now we do not have any system updater in the system settings and we have the button section right here we have the invert layout and in the power menu we have the device controls the panic trigger we have the advanced reboot as well let me go back we have the edge long swipe actions as well then we have the allow power menu on lock screen option you can disable that if you don't want that for privacy reasons we have the long press for power button toggle torch and we have the automatically turn off torch option, wake device, answer call, control playback, and we have the reorient and the show volume panel on the left side. Click to take partial screenshot is also there. Now in the gestures, we also have the quickly open camera and stuff. Then we have the navigation mode right here. In the settings of it, we do get the hide gesture bar, then the swipe to invoke assistant also works perfectly fine. We have the back gesture animation, haptic feedback, then the screen height for the back gesture and we have the left edge right edge customization but there is no like thickness or the length customization for the pill bar that's how it is let me just go back we also have the three button navigation right here in case you need that we have the one handed mode working perfectly fine here we have the tap to check phone which looks like this and also we get the double tap to check phone which works like this i guess so i'm not really sure why <laughs> both of them are there but yeah these two things are there we have the lift to check phone as well so you can use it but it will straight up go into the lock screen i guess if you enable this one so i'll try that later and we also have the long press on frequent sensor to unlock phone this is for the screen of a 40 it is working fine we have the press and hold power button action you can set it to digital assistant if you want swipe to take screenshot is also working fine we have the share edit delete the google lens and also the capture mode feature appears then we have the brightness control and the prevent ringing so you can adjust the brightness by just sliding a finger on the status bar just notice how smoothly it works so this is very nice that we get all of these features right here. We also get the pop-up camera settings. In here we have the camera LED and the camera raise dialog, then the pop-up camera sound effects. We also get the calibration option for the motorized front camera in case you need that. Let's just add this battery widget. Also, it was not showing up the Bluetooth battery, but right now, as you can see, right now it is showing the proper battery stats. Here is the phone's battery showing up as 72% and here is the Bluetooth battery showing up as 100%. So the battery widget right now is working fine and let's just tap on them. And yeah, they are working perfectly fine. Even my Bluetooth headset's battery is showing up properly. Now, if I try to show you, yes, also the clock widget and stuff is working perfectly fine and the animations of them are working great, no problems. Now, let's talk about the launcher settings and in here you will get the pixel launcher as by default. And here we can disable the shades and stuff, but there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen because this is a pixel launcher. To the left of the home screen, we do get the Google's Discover page and it is very smooth experience, but this is totally in 60 Hertz. There is no overclocking of screen in this particular ROM yet. And swiping up, we'll get to the app drawer. You can search for any particular apps. And if you want to go into the quick setting panel, you just swipe down. You will get the quick setting panel, which looks like this. I have actually customized it a little bit. And this is how it looks like. You will get this like rounded kind of looking quick toggles. Let me just disable the dark thing so that I can show you better. Whichever you enable, it will go circle. And whichever are disabled, it will stay this square kind of shape. If you're noticing the square kind of shape it has. 
So yeah, these are all the toggles that I have and you can edit and add even more toggles if you want. By default, you will get the internet toggle and stuff, but I have added the Wi-Fi toggle and they are working perfectly fine. Wi-Fi and mobile data both. So if you insert a Voltage SIM card, it should be working. And the Bluetooth battery stats and stuff shows up on the quick setting panel too. And the flashlight, everything is working fine. The Google Home controls are there. The battery saver always on display. You can toggle it on or off from here. And even for charging option is there. We have the screen recorder as well, which has these many options. We also get the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time with all these features like HEVC and stuff. We have the dark theme, the night light, the hotspot, auto rotate and we also have the sound toggle, the ambient display heads up and the data saver. Also we get the DC dimming, then the reading mode, the extra name feature, security and privacy kind of settings, camera access and mic access disabling option, the alarm kind of option and we also have the high brightness mode toggle. So in case you are outdoors, you can just turn on this toggle, it will make the display <laughs> with huge brightness. As you can see, let me just go to the next page. We have the airplane mode, the do not disturb and the screencast normal things. We have the brightness rider on the bottom because I have customized it that way. And here, if you have advanced reboot enabled, you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. Now here, let's talk about the stock camera. Yes, you do not get the MIUI camera or something like that, but I would say it's a decent camera app and you can use it. This is just like a lineage OS kind of camera app and you can do normal settings kind of stuff. You can turn on mic or turn off mic with the video settings. And in the photo settings, there is this zooming option, I guess. And as you can see, it is working perfectly fine. And there is the aspect ratio changing option, the grid settings and stuff like that. And even the normal settings options are there. Let me just take a quick photo. So yeah, this is how the photo actually looks like. It has good amount of details, I would say, but not the best optimization. So yeah, for no taking normal basic videos and pictures, it should be working perfectly fine. And even the front camera with this one, as you can see, is working perfectly fine. It is a little bit underexposed. So yeah, this is how it looks. It has good amount of details, but slightly, I would say it's not like MIUI camera. I'll show you some samples on the screen so that you can get an idea. But yeah, you get the idea. This is a basic camera app and with front camera, you can shoot up to 1080p videos. So definitely the stock camera will get the job done over here. The stock dialer and the messaging app and stuff are from Google over here. So you can use them if you want. There should be call recording. If you insert a SIM card, they will appear. And by the way, in the app section, you will also get the cloned apps option. So you can have two accounts for WhatsApp with this dual apps kind of settings in Android 14. So that's really great. Also, there is the game space. So you can add any game that you are looking for. And with that, you can have the game overlay with the APKs and stuff and all other gaming mode settings. You can have those. Also in the notification settings, if you just scroll down, you will get the bubbles and stuff, but also you will get this flash screen notification. And here, this is how it looks like whenever you receive a notification. There is also this camera flash. If you turn it on, it will look like this whenever you receive a notification. So yeah, these are great features of Android 14 in my opinion. Let me talk about the battery settings. This is how it looks like it has Beautiful looking battery settings UI. We have the percentage on top, then the bar, and it is showing an estimated number of how long it can last with the charge you have. Then we have the battery usage, the battery saver. Also, we get the charging control. But if you enable this one, your fast charging numbers may drop. So be careful about that. Also, we have the battery optimization right here. So you can do per app battery optimization. Also, we have the block sensors right here. So if you want to block some sensors for some particular apps, you can do that from right here. Now let's talk about battery life, shall we? I have got about eight and a half hours of screen on time, which should be, I would say decent because these are all estimated numbers, but still eight and a half hours of screen on time with a device which is three years old or more than three years old with latest software, that's just awesome. And here the screen off shows as three days and the combined use shows as 33 hours. So that's more than one day. So huge amount of numbers, I would say in terms of battery life, but definitely I have a replaced battery. With that, I'm getting good battery life. And here, based on two sessions, you can see my battery health from here. I have about 91% of battery health and the fast charging and stuff, everything is working perfectly fine. Even the charging animation looks really beautiful over here. And in case you are wondering about my charging cycles, yes, with the dev check app, I can actually show you that I have about 95 charging cycles on this particular battery. Now in the sound and vibration settings, this is how it looks like. We have the media call ring, etc. volume controls. We have the do not disturb. Then if you just scroll down more, we have the volume panel timeout as well. So you can customize and it is just amazing to see all of these customizations in this particular ROM, but the whole separate customization, I'll show you that in the later part of this video. So do stay tuned for that. We have the vibration and haptics and the ringtone vibration pattern changing option. Also, if you scroll down more, we have the dial pad tone, screen locking sound, charging sound, etc. And we have the screenshot sound as well. You can disable that if you want. But our volume control is also there. You can enable it if you want. But there is no me audio Dirac yet, I would say. 
but let me actually show you the volume panel looks like this and you can increase or decrease the volume panel like mean volume from here and if you just want to put your device into silent or vibrate you can do that from here also if you just want to expand the volume panel it works like this and even the sound output device switching option also works perfectly fine as you can see from the screen in the display settings we have the brightness level adaptive brightness lock screen kind of settings we have the use device controls as well and in here we will also get the always show time and info that's the always on display and the always on when charging double tap to check phone and stuff like that and the lift to check phone is also there i'll show you that and we have the wake screen for notification as well there is a dark theme and in case you want to enable this pure black you definitely can that's really awesome i have enabled that we have the display size and text navigation mode is there as well and we have the dpi customization then the nightlight option is also there and if you enable that you will get the intensity customization from right here for the nightlight then we have the live display you can change the colors and change the color calibration rgb control pretty much then we have the colors option you can change it to natural boosted and adaptive then we have the prevent accidental wake up then double tap to sleep wake up on plug and the enable blurs option also we get the descending and the hybrid mode right here let me actually talk about one thing that's the security settings now in here i would say yes in the more settings there is no app lock and stuff do not expect those this early i would say but in the device unlock settings we have the scramble pin layout and the enable pin privacy but quick unlock is not there yet and in the biometric unlock you will get the face unlock and the pixel imprint option and the unlock your phone and the verify it's even apps all these things but the face unlock if you just set it up it will always use the face unlock whenever the screen wakes up so you cannot have that just unlock with the face unlock whenever you swipe up on the lock screen that feature you do not have yet so i think they will be added in the future but as of right now you don't get those and there is a double tap to sleep on the status bar that works perfectly fine and double tapping to wake also works perfectly fine and here the finger scanner from here in the lock screen it's working and even the screen of f40 let me actually show you yep it is working perfectly fine so pretty much everything is working perfectly fine over here with the finger scanner and let me actually show you the pickup gesture or the lift to check phone and here as you can see lift to check phone just worked perfectly fine and if i enable the always on display let me show you how it looks like this is how it looks like in the always on display and if i just double tap just notice how beautiful it looks in the lock screen and in the always on display the transition of android 14 it just looks super dope even with this finger let me actually show you yeah the finger bit scanner speed has no issues so far and the animations are very smooth on this rom it just looks very good now in the wallpaper sense styles this is how it looks like if you go into the lock screen settings there are all these lock screen clocks that you can choose from and let me actually show you how it looks in here in the always on display and in the lock screen it looks super beautiful again and the animations of android 14 on of the lock screen clocks definitely looks dope and here as well it looks beautiful now also you can change the wallpapers from right here there are these kind of wallpapers and there are the AI wallpapers as well in case you want to enable those and the shortcuts you can actually change left and right shortcut you do have the flashlight option and stuff so you can do that and for the lock screen shortcuts you just need to tap and hold on them you, if you just tap it it doesn't work if you tap and hold it works perfectly fine so yeah lock screen shortcuts are working great and the home screen settings we have the app grid up to 5x5 five five. then we also have the themed icons if you want to enable that you can from right here Talking about basic things of the ROM, yes, the banking apps are working fine. The Dero Info shows as L1 here and the Google Photos does have the unlimited Google Photos backup. So that's really good to see in this particular ROM. In case you are wondering about the performance of this ROM, yes, in test UFO website, it shows 60 Hertz. But overall, I would say while daily driving, we, even with 60 Hertz, if you are used to it, it will look perfectly fine. And even in Twitter scrolling and stuff, everything is perfectly smooth and switching between apps is not a problem at all. And let me actually open apps like Play Store and x and then youtube so with all of these i would say switching between apps it's not a problem it's just working great so overall in the whole ui i don't see any issues there is a split screen option and stuff and with all of that everything is working perfectly fine no problem so far so day-to-day -day usage will not be a problem on this particular rom in my opinion it's just a great experience to see and here are the Android 20 Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to give you an idea about the overall UI performance. Now it's time that I show you the customizations of this ROM. Well, those are present inside this dark space settings and in here you will get a random message every time you open settings. And in the dark space, first of all, we have the status bar, then we have the quick setting panel and all of that. 
now let me just start from the status bar in here we have the battery settings and the battery style you can actually change it to icon let skimp right or left circle dotted circle filled circle etc and the battery percentage you can have next to the icon and this is how it looks like with that there is no ios style the recent ones i would say are not present but they will be added i guess in the future in the clock settings this is how it looks like we have the ampn style then the background chip and all everything you can enable we have the status bar items as well headset bluetooth etc kind of icons even the vaulty view wifi icons you can enable if you want to if you insert the sim card it will show up and we have the traffic indicators right here then the miscellaneous settings are there we have the logo customization and we have the colored icons notification icon bluetooth battery stats everything option are there next thing we get the quick setting panel in here we have the notifications then we have the dt card app colored background and the landscape only option and we have the quick setting panel customization the layout of the quick setting panel you can actually change as you can see we have this small circles but if you just select this large pill you will get the normal android 14 kind of quick setting panel let me actually show you yeah this is how it looks like so this is a really good thing that you can customize this whole page if you want to so by default it looks like this and you can actually change the columns in portrait and columns in landscape so all of these you can customize then we have the hide quick setting in lock screen then the require unlocking to use sensitive tiles vibrate on toggle touch even the background transparency you can change let me just do that to 22 percent so that you can see it better i guess you can actually notice that blurry kind of effect in the background so that's really good we also have the brightness slider you can have it on show always and the position to bottom then we have the auto brightness icon and even the battery icon style you can have it on follow status bar or you can choose it in the quick setting panel then we have the clear all notification button in the animation styles and the animation duration then we have the interpolator as well then the show data usage options so the data usage actually shows up right here next one we have the lock screen ui and in here we have the fingerprint authentication vibration unlock animation and the lock screen clock font you can actually change the lock screen clock font from right here to the like previous android 13 kind of you can definitely do that from right here you can see all the options right here but you need to make sure that you go into the wallpapers and styles and select this default clock first so that it will be applied into these kind of clocks we have the charging animation then the media cover art even the media art blur level you can customize then we have the ambient display option here you will get the battery bar when charging and you can also have this always show battery bar on the always on display which looks like this beautiful customizations i would say then in the system settings we have the general settings we do not have anything in here they will be added in the future updates i guess in the customizations we have the monet theme engine in here we have the background color in the luminance chroma factor etc changing option then we have the headline and body fonts you can change the whole ui fonts to the nothing font lg font etc options and the oneplus 2.0 option then the other options like the big noodle titling google sans roboto and all other options that you can notice from right here huge amount of font customization are present we have the brightness slider style even you can change that to like cyberpunk option and this is how it looks like with that and even you can go with the rounded clip and with that this is how it looks like you get the idea you get huge amount of customizations even for the brightness slider and the navigation bar as well you can change if you are using three button navigations you can change that from right here also we get the icon packs and these are the options for that so you can choose any icon pack from right here even the wi-fi icon styles you can choose that from right here and just notice the amount of signal icon styles which are present huge options then we also have the data icon styles so you can have this kind of icon styles in case you want to then we also have the icon shapes and these are the options for that and in the pulse settings of course you can have the navigation bar pulse then the lock screen pulse etc for music pretty much so you can customize that so huge amount of customizations are present and in my opinion it's a really great time to flash this android 14 rom on your redmi k20 pro and how are the animations how are the smoothness of android 14 in case you want to feel all of those on your redmi k20 pro you can do that right now with this particular rom so Dart Faced has been definitely one of my favorite ROMs in the past and I am just happy to see a Android 14 ROM for the Redmi K20 Pro that is working really really well already. Yes, it doesn't have MIUI camera and stuff but of course they I think will be added in the future updates. So let me know down there in the comments what you guys think. Please share this video out with your friends if you feel like. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Dira from KD and Dick signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.